Now, I'm rather proud of the drawers because I've tried something new. Now, uh, I know in the past I've either used uh, dominoes or sometimes I've even uh, used the lead dovetail jig uh, for drawers, but I've tried something completely different this time. Uh, what I've done is uh, the drawers are made of MDF, the front is uh, veneered MDF, and uh, the bottom is just a piece of hardboard, basically, in this case, but it could be uh, thin MDF as well. And uh, in order to create the joints uh, between the sides and the front and between the back and the sides, um, I've used a, a method of a floating tenon, and you can see uh, the, the mark where it's gone in here, and that is just the saw cuff uh, from my TS55, which I've got mounted in the Festool uh, table saw CMS unit. Uh, and so I've got a saw cuff there, saw cuff in here, and then my floating tenon goes in between. I'm making a whole bunch of edging strips. It's really easy, particularly now I've got the uh, new band saw. And I don't know if you can see just how thin this last piece was that uh, came off here. Um, and that was very consistent all the way along. And I've got my final piece of edging. And that was really easy to make all of the edging I needed for this project. Now for my various drawer parts, I've put some oak edging on. This is one of the side pieces and I want the oak edging on the bottom and on the top. Uh, and so um, I've put it on and it's a little bit too proud. I've now got to trim that off. And I've set up the router table as follows. I've got a cutter in here which has got a ball bearing at the top. It's a, uh, a flush trim cutter. Um, and I've put the fence here. Now technically with the flush trim cutter you don't need the fence. But the advantage for me with the fence, and I'd suggest the advantage for everyone on the fence, is that it gives some protection should you accidentally do something wrong. The fence is set back by a about uh, three millimeters from the line of the cutter uh, and so that's going to allow me to let this wood pass and I can keep the wood uh, upright uh, by either resting the base uh, of the wood on the base of the router table or by finding uh, this vertical edge uh, with the edge of the uh, board and following that. <laughs> And there we go, that's all perfect now. Just a light sand and it'll be done. Now I thought I'd show a different way of doing the drawers. They are all made of MDF and the fronts are veneered MDF. And rather than using the domino or any other technique, I thought I'd try uh, doing some trenching cuts. And this is my uh, pretend piece of uh, drawer front. Uh, and I put a trenching cut in here, uh, close to the edge. Uh, and uh, the edge piece that goes into this uh, would have a trenching cut as well, like so. And I've made some little floating tenons, uh, and these would fit in uh, like so. Uh, and then all I need to do then is to line the two up and like so. And there I have my joint. And that's perfectly flat there, and so it seems to be a reasonable technique. Now the important thing to note is that the uh, floating tenon has to have the grain running that way. If you had the grain running this way, and that would mean that you've got one half the joint here and the other half the other side, then there's a chance that it could split down the middle. So the grain has to run crossways. And again, the new uh, bandsaw is perfect for doing this. Uh, I set the uh, fence up at uh, about two and a half millimeters, uh, and that's held in place. And then I've taken some strips off this a uh, big uh, lump of oak here. And here's one that I've uh, produced and uh, you can see that that fits uh, in there uh, snugly. Uh, I could just adjust this a little bit with uh, sandpaper if I wish to and uh, uh, that will do the job. And because the grain is running this way I'm going to make slices across here uh, in my case a 16 millimeters uh, uh, width strips uh, which will be perfect for my floating tenons.
I've just been using the CMS TS uh, table saw uh, to do the various rebates I needed for the drawers. I've got the ones that go vertically, which are for all the uh, various uh, floating tenons, and I've got those that go horizontally, which are to take the base uh, of the drawer itself. Now, when I came to do uh, the rebate for the draw base here, uh, I stopped uh, at these two marks uh, so that I wouldn't outrun uh, the front of the drawer with the saw. I've now got to continue that channel along and I'm going to turn to the router table to do that. Now the power is off and I've put a 6mm uh, cutter in here which is as close as I can get to the uh, size of the channel I need uh, and I've arranged for the flute to be at the back uh, facing the fence. The fence will eventually go like this. And what I've then done is put one of my uh, draw fronts uh, and using the central area which is cut to the correct depth uh, like so. Now I've adjusted the height so that the tip of the cutter is just touching uh, the uh, uh, bottom of the trench that's already been made. Next I'm going to turn this around horizontally and I'm going to now position my fence so that it's just snugly against there. So that's held in place really by the location of that cutter and I'm now going to fix the fence in place, like so. So I now need some means of uh, working out where to start and stop the cut. And I can line this uh, up uh, with uh, the groove showing, and I can see where the cutter is, and I know that I don't want to be any closer than there. So I've put a pencil mark on the fence there. And when I come to this other side, it just so happens uh, that I want to finish it on the edge there where that fence ends. So I've got my start and stop positions. I can now uh, do my little bit of trenching to get rid of that slight curve from the saw blade. And there you can see the channel's now elongated into the right position. Now I was rather short of this material which I'm using for the uh, base of the drawers uh, and so everything's been a bit of a compromise and rather than running the, uh, the, the drawer base out to the back of the drawer and having the drawer back sit on top of it, I've had to end it uh, shorter uh, and into, into the back because there just was not enough of this material. You might be able to see the short scraps over there. The key to making things nice and square, uh, when, when you see me do that at the end of each assembly, is things like this. Cutting this absolutely square means that when this drawer comes together, it's going to be very difficult to assemble it anything other than square. And I get that squareness by using uh, the path dogs and the cutting station that I created with the path guide system. Right, I've just had a trial assembly and that all worked okay. Um, I've now got to work out my gluing strategy because um, I want to make sure I don't have any uh, little difficulties towards the end. Now this is an interesting one to assemble because I want things going down onto the front but then I want the sides going in on the back. But I think it will be uh, perfectly possible to bring the sides in on the back uh, like so and so I'm going to start by doing uh, the front and getting everything joined on here. Now I've never used this technique for making drawers before and I've devised it just to help people who don't have a domino. Now the interesting thing about this is I've just glued it up now, I've clamped it to force it into uh, the joints uh, and then take the clamps off and it's staying there perfectly well. 
I'll just ch check the square. And, <laughs> uh, come on. Um, you, well, you know what I'm going to tell you. This is absolutely spot on. This is uh, not a bad technique if you don't have a lamello um, biscuit jointer or, or a festal domino. So, not a bad alternative. Um, my personal preference, I will use the domino every single day uh, because it would have taken a quarter of the time. Now the handles I'm using uh, just happen to have uh, 96 millimeter centers because th this tends to be quite a common uh, dimension, uh, certainly in Europe. Uh, and so what have I got here? I've got one of the path sticks on the path guide system uh, and I've worked out exactly where it should be placed. I've put a pencil line here and here so it's central to each drawer. I know how far I've got to measure down uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead now and drill uh, the holes for my handles. That's that. Absolutely spot in the right place. And I'll do the next one. I'm graduating the distance that the handles are from the top. The bigger the drawer, the slightly further down it goes. And as always, a quick coat of Osmo Polyhex finishes everything off nicely. I'm not bothering to do anything with the MDF. Um, this is just a workshop tool after all um, but the bits of oak I thought I'd just make sure they get a little bit of a, a dressing of poly x make them look nice and just one coat is all it needs Well, that's it. That's the new bandsaw stand complete. Um, I'm pretty proud of these, uh, the new idea of these uh, bins here for the old uh, nail guns and things. And uh, I rather like the, uh, the new method of making these drawers, which should appeal to people who don't have the domino or a lamello uh, machine. Now, those were pretty easy. Um, I've shown you uh, yet another use for the path stick when it came to putting these handles on. Uh, and, of course, uh, as usual, we've got the Coldeen casters, which makes the whole thing uh, very easy to move around the workshop. Now, this bandsaw is absolutely superb, and I will be making uh, several videos about it in the not-too-distant future. Uh, I'll give an overview video first, and then after that, I'll do a detailed video of how to set the thing up. Now, what I like in particular is the accuracy, and just look. Uh, if you haven't seen it in any of the previous video material, uh, here's just one of the thin veneers that I've cut with this machine. It's absolutely perfect. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.